The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Just let me move this over here. And we're coming to you tonight around the world on Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, and on Channel 34, Simul TV at simultv.com. Before we get to my guest this hour, uh, you may have heard me talk about 50 for free, and that's 50 TV stations, 95 video games, as well as thousands of movies on demand, 100% free. Now, to take this, uh, to take advantage of this, and if you'd like to be part of this package, it's very simple. Like I said, there's no cost. It's 100% free from the Exxon TV channel and uh, Simul TV. Just go to beautifulmindcoffee.ca, scroll down to the bottom of their main page, and all the sign up information is there. And like I said, 50 channels, 95 uh, video games in five languages, and Thousands of movies on demand, 100% totally free. It's a great package. I caught myself watching too many TV programs today. Um, my guest this hour is Kelly Brickle, and uh, Kelly has had uh, has been with us before. She is a psychic. She is a medium. She uh, does numerology and energetic healing. And uh, joining us now is Kelly Brickle. And Kelly, welcome back to the Exxon. Great having you with us. Hey, Rob. Thank you for having me. Good evening over there. It's just dark, but, you know, you're at just the top of the darkness yourself with just it being pitch black. It's still bright out here in California. Oh, yeah. It's, it's probably beautiful with a nice California breeze and... Everything swaying, this beautiful sunset over the Pacific Ocean. Yes, it's still bright. <sighs> still nice out. I'm maybe California dreaming right, a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> when my wife and I go to uh, Maui, to our home there, it screws me up for about a week because of the, you know, it's a nearly, let me see if it's a six, seven hour difference. And it really throws me for a loop. And it throws me for the loop when we get back here. But oh my gosh. you got to do what you got to do. You got to go to Hawaii. I haven't done it yet. I'm looking forward to one day. You will love it. You will love it. The people are super friendly. Uh, we love swimming with the sea turtles, the dolphins, going uh, diving into the beautiful clear crystal water into the corals. Ah, it's beautiful there. And um, you yeah. will have... A, I'm sorry. You do that every time you go. Is that like a, yeah. a path to love? Wow, it, that sounds amazing. It is. It is. My wife and I, and well, we we go a lot down to the uh, Caribbean as well. We love snorkeling, scuba diving, and I, I don't know when, when you're in water, you feel as if you're part of something greater. Yeah, I I really do agree. So, what's new with you, Kelly? What have you been up to since you and I last chatted? Oh gosh, um, just uh, sharing away. I, I love to talk about, you know, my passion for this work with just kind of making the esoteric practical. So that's something I'm always doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been working with people one on one, uh, groups. Um, I worked on updating my website. So I have a logo now that I'm very proud Ooh. of. Ocean themed. So I mm -hmm. thought maybe, you know, you would appreciate it. It's a Nautilus. Yes. Very so, good. so, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm always looking to expand ways that I can grow myself. So my number one thing to be more centered outside is to center my inside. So, um, making sure that I'm in a place where I can be, um, the most clear for others. Kelly, how did you get started on your quest into being a psychic medium? And then your, 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 
your knowledge of numerology and, and of course when it comes to the um, soul and energy that you work with so many people around the world with how did this all start um it started when i was younger so um when i was a teenager i had mm -hmm. a lot of uh sleeping issues like i just couldn't get to bed Ooh. and yeah i just could it's like my brain was just like you know plugged into the circuit at night where mm -hmm. i would be tired during the day and i'm just like gosh i just can't wait yeah. to go to sleep and then it would just be so stimulated at night. So there was this like really repetitive cycle of not getting enough sleep, not getting enough sleep. And it kind of just broke down my body. And you can imagine when you are growing, that's when you need the most sleep. Exactly. Yeah. And I just, I couldn't get that balance. So I had health problems because of that. And then I was taken out of, you know, the normal flow of schooling. Mm -hmm. And so I was at home a lot. Um, and I was just like, what's the meaning of all this? Like, I don't understand. I actually enjoyed school. So I was actually like actively trying to get back to school. And so with all that time to myself, I was thinking, you know, there has to be a reason I'm going through this. Like, cause I wouldn't choose this. Mm -hmm. I don't want this. So what's the higher order? So if I'm not able to establish some type of control or the situation, there has to be something greater than me at play. And I just started acknowledging that there was these other, I guess, senses that I was picking up that I never was taught about within the world around me. I noticed that I started becoming more sensitive with people. I noticed that I started meditating and I would write down a journal and then I would pick up a book on spirituality and the author would be talking about all the things that I was feeling. And it felt very philosophical. I didn't even think it was real, but I'm just like, why are people talking about all the things that I'm thinking about? And they're talking about yeah. experiences that I'm having. Like, I didn't think it was anything to it. I just thought, you know, I'm having maybe different thoughts than other people. And they're just right. in my brain, and they're just in my body and they're just in my emotions. I didn't think it was special at all. You know, I had a very hard time in the beginning understanding that this was even real i just thought like oh it's just like my perceptions whoopee right <laughs> and some cool things happen with my perceptions sometimes whoopee that's what i thought and actually it's pretty great <laughs> well i think you are very special you've got oh, you. you've got wonderful gifts and i know for a fact that you help many many people so uh for those who don't have the opportunity of thanking you in person thank you for them I, too, Kelly, love the night. I'm a night owl. You have uh, to be the show. <laughs> you know, uh, in, in, before I came into broadcasting full-time, I was a police officer, and my favorite shift was 8 a.m., 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. You know, and it would give me such pride at the end of a shift. Like, our my territory was 15 square miles, and I was the only officer on patrol in the that that uh, area at that time and my greatest feeling of accomplishment would be as sunrise i'd go to the highest part of the uh, area that i that i patrolled and looked over my area and said thank you for getting us through another night and something about the night has always resonated with me so i fully understand where you're coming from and it's night and it's really nice to meet another nighthawk Another night. Yeah, I salute you, Nighthawk. Do, do you uh, appreciate the quietness of it? What do you appreciate the most? Um, I appreciate the feeling that I get. Like when I finish my show tonight and I go home, I'll, uh, I'll sit down in my favorite chair. All the lights will be off. And, I'll, and you know, we're, we're rather high in the building that we look over Lake Ontario. And right from our living room, you can see Toronto right across the lake. And I get such a feeling of peace, inner contentment. It's like all is well with the world. And I love that feeling. I do my best thinking at, at these hours. I always have a, a pad and pencil beside my chair. And if I have any issues that I need to work out, some people say, you know, work it, you know, it'll, it'll let me let me think on it overnight. But that time between 3.30 and 5.30 in the morning, that is when I get most of my thinking done and my planning done. Any problems that need to be resolved come to me during that time. And it's, you know, it's been like that ever since I was a kid. 
You know, in fact, the, the quietness of the night used to wake me up with that, that sound of silence that people don't understand, but I know you do. There is a, there is a sound of silence. And what I had to do in order to get some sleep was I needed a radio on to break the silence. And, you know, I would, I would get some sleep, but when you are, when you're a night hawk, I don't know, something about the night. It, I just love it. And I really love nighttime when it's raining. And I love thunderstorms. I know that sounds weird. No. I, I, <laughs> I love thunderstorms. <laughs> I can resonate with what you're saying. Yeah. It's one of my favorite uh, things, uh, sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I like looking out and seeing it. I just, I reference it a lot in my, in my work. I go, you have to be in touch with what gets you gives you joy yes. and help rest in thunderstorms. Yeah. So I get it. It's something about it. And then the smell of the earth when it rains. And it's like, it's like mother nature is cleansing and giving everybody another chance to do better instead of doing the negative things that a lot of people do. Let's get some yeah. positive things going here because we I only get, we only get one spin at this. <laughs> I, uh, no, it's actually been raining all day today, so it's very relevant. And every time that there is a lot of rain, not just like a shower or drizzle, mm -hmm. I just feel very like relieved because yeah. I do feel like there's that ah, in the air. And it's funny that you mentioned listening to the radio at night because that was one of the things that would help. Well, it would do both. It would keep me up, but also it would put me to sleep yeah. because it's almost like I would need some type of cadence with my brain. So I mm -hmm. listened to a lot of talk radio when I was young. And so I have a very appreciative, like a lot of appreciation <laughs> for talk radio because of that. <laughs> I actually went to talk radio camp when I was uh, uh, in my teens because I love talk radio so much. And I was the only one there for talk radio. Everyone was there for music. <laughs> right. Well, the industry can always use another young talent to carry the torch for us old guys that are, you know, that have been doing this for so many years. Kelly, stand by, my dear. You and I have to take our first break. And next donation, our guest this hour is Kelly Brickle. Her website is kellybrickle.com. That's K-E-L-L-Y-B-R-I-C-K-E-L.com. And we'll both be back on the other side of this break as the X-Zone continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, my very special guest this hour, Kelly Brickle, on the other side of the short break. Don't go away. Question, what is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer, you get Beautiful Mind Coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brain alicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Chang, and Dr. Winslow, the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee, decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and nonverbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning? 
For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today. we're back uh, just before we get back to kelly a bit of uh programming information here we have five new shows starting on the exome broadcast network uh in fact one starts next week with uh, dr janet star hull who's going to be doing her weekly show entitled healthy alternatives also coming on the network shortly will be dr georgina cannon and dr leah savina and we have a few other shows that are in the works that's coming up right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network, and they will be available on the XZBN, our radio stations, and, of course, on Simul TV at Channel 34. Kelly Brickles, our guest. Kelly, as a psychic medium, how do you deal with the amount of energy that this must take when you're doing a reading or communicating on the other side? Like, how do you do it? Um, I think that it really comes down to having an understanding of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like when you're first developing, or let's say when you first have experiences and you don't know what's going on, you go, what am I supposed to do with this? How am I supposed to work with this? Mm -hmm. Um, and you just feel, I think, very confused. Um, and you have to find some equilibrium. Once you start making sense of things, you can say, hey, if I like this enough, um, I'd like to do this for other people, but I have to really get an understanding of myself and you take on that responsibility. For people who, let's say, are interested in it and they have a lot of wellness within their life because of it, because awareness is wellness. Mm -hmm. um, and this work is about truth and understanding, and that just equals to upgrading your entire life. That's something that they can take on and build within their life. But if you do it professionally, you have to be devoted to understanding yourself so you can put yourself in a place of clarity for other people. And so once you, you take on that responsibility, mm -hmm. um, you go, these are my skills and these are my gifts. And what can I do to show up so I can give them in my best light to other people. And that is something that you're always going to be evolving in. Um, and you just try to be as honest with yourself with how can I help people best today? And so there's some years where I've done way more mediumship. There's some years I've done way more healing work. There's some uh, years where I've done way more psychic or numerology work. And I would say this year I've done way more psychic and numerology work. And that is how I feel like I can best serve people right now. Um, so I just go, hey, I feel most like myself and mm -hmm. I feel like I can give you the most to make your life have some type of meaning when you come to a session with me. I'm focusing on that because these are my talents and I'm leaning into that. And I don't find that I have an energy depletion. Then I have an energy gain. Gotcha. If I go against my grain, I will, I will have an energy depletion. Or if I don't take care of my body while I'm exerting my energy in a certain way, no matter what I do, I will have an energy depletion. So it's really about health and understanding. Kelly, how do the spirits on the other side know that you have the ability to communicate with them? So I believe that everyone can be a receiver of the spirit world. I believe it's something that is natural within all of us. It's just, it's so subtle that a lot of people won't pay attention. It's so subtle that a lot of people will, you know, overthink it, um, not even focus on it. I mean, 
I overthought it when it first started happening to me and I overthought it for years and I was having real experiences and it didn't, I didn't accept it until I was basically hit over the head with it multiple times where I couldn't deny it. I was just like, I have an active imagination. I'm just really, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just, I, I seem to guess things. I seem to feel yeah. things about other people. What is that? You know? Um, so, uh, you just have to, if you want to, or if life humbles you or <laughs> gets you into an environment where you kind of have to pay attention. So like sometimes when people lose a loved one, they're not looking to be a medium, but they feel their mom around them all the time. For some reason, they smell grandma's perfume. They hear their, their dad's voice. They have flashes in their mind over a certain memory. They they swore they you know saw their cousin walking down the street and then they had a again a memory flash it's like all these little things they see a penny on the ground and it's the year of their loved one's birth and it's just like all the universe is conspiring to communicate to us and if our loved ones have made an impact within our heart and especially if they are are part of our family they are never far from us and they're gonna look to a way to just say hi to us. They're going to look for a way to be a part of our life because we are never apart from them. And they're just teaching us a different way to listen and to understand reality. That's all that's going on in my eyes. Kelly, when you're, um, when you're doing your work as a medium, has there ever been a time where somebody has come to you requesting a communication with somebody on the other side and you do what you do in order to find this soul on the other side. And they say, Hey, I don't want to talk to that person. Uh, uh-uh. that's it. Goodbye, Kelly. <laughs> oh, you mean, so the spirit doesn't want to talk to yes. the person? Yeah. Um, no, any, any, um, you know, they're pretty neutral. Really, so eh? they, yeah, they're pretty. They'll come in with personality quirks mm-hmm. to highlight who they were as a soul here. They'll be like, "I was this here. I did that here." But like, if they're, how can I put it? Um, the spirit world knows better than we do. So if I see them, they made their appearance known. They made their presence known. If I see them, if I feel them, I hear them. Mm-hmm. They're there for a reason. They're there because their loved one pulled their energy in. I didn't pull their energy in other than the fact that I go, hey, you know, I'm going to pay attention when they come for you. Does that make sense? So you're a conduit. Yeah, exactly. Like gotcha. they're bringing, they're bringing in their people more than I'm bringing in their people. I can just facilitate the process and to highlight the the energy that's present. So you are the Babel app of meetings. <laughs> sometimes I am. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I am. <laughs> um, I I would imagine Kelly, because I've had the opportunity of speaking to you a couple of times. I I feel that you're very uh, very empathic warm-hearted person and this comes flowing to me every time i talk to you how do you deal with a mother and father who've lost a child oh that's a great question yeah so so within this work you know i'm going to be very honest within this work there's certain energies that gravitate towards us. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, there's certain people where mothers and fathers who have lost a child will gravitate to them. It's almost like they know the medium can fulfill that purpose, right? Um, So you'll find within your work that, Mm -hmm. you know, you'll, you'll get similar types of energy. Within my work, for whatever reason, I do not get a lot of families that have lost a child. I have had a year or two where they're they were coming to me quite regularly um for you know a couple pockets of months and it was almost like then i just for whatever reason i get a lot of people who want to talk to their mother their Mm -hmm. father their grandparents their aunts their uncles their friends i get so much of that energy and for whatever reason i don't get a lot of child energy so it's um something that i actually don't specialize in for whatever reason they don't come find me for that reason but i work with a lot of living children understanding how to develop their gifts understanding if they're not um uh 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to talk about, you know, the things that they're feeling so they can get it outside of their body and to understand what they're experiencing. So I do a lot of kid work with the living, but not much with spirit. It's not funny, but it's true. Why? It, it, it seems that the entire world of spirit is opening up very wide. It's blossoming. People are more acceptive of the concept. More people are believing. Um, I think I believe the children that that are here with us now who are coming to us are so gifted and it's nice to hear that there's people like you that are helping them to develop their gifts because i'm sure it must be very confusing for the child to have all these imaginary friends and, and hearing and seeing things with parents who i would imagine the majority of time really don't believe them yes yes and it's just like you can't kind of comprehend what you don't know and yeah uh, it's just within this facet of my life, I can offer some of that understanding just in this department in life. I don't know everything, mm -hmm. but I can help in this department of life. And so I'm happy to do that with uh, parents and children who don't understand why am I seeing somebody, you know, in my uh, room at night? Why can't I go to sleep? Why can't I turn my brain off? Why am I so nervous? Why do I feel other people? Or when I talk to other people, they think I'm weird. Um, yeah. Uh, and we work with the kids um, with their sensitivities of, who they are as a unique individual. And a lot of the kids are very, very smart, yes. very, very perceptive. It's like talking to an adult. What's it like being a psychic medium, numerologist, and uh, somebody who works with soul and energy post COVID? Oh, okay. Um, I think the number one thing that I've noticed, so like some of my teachers and my peers within mm -hmm. this work, um, they have expressed this too as well. So this is quite universal. The need for psychic readings has gone up. The need for people wanting to understand their path and to understand why am I here? Why am I becoming more sensitive? Where am I going? Um, and to have some type of guidance within their um, feelings and their choices has just gone through the stratosphere. Really? Uh huh. Because people are just not content and they're becoming way more sensitive and it's amplifying how they're coping. And a lot of people are not doing well. I hope that we've seen the last of the COVID serpent, but something inside me tells me not yet. What's your impression? My impression of the existential crisis of humanity is going to continue to peak. Um, I mean, you're just seeing it in multiple forms, like with even AI and how it's, you know, fulfilling a lot of the jobs yeah. um, and a lot of um, what people would normally do. And so people are kind of forced to shift um, and to be more creative individuals mm -hmm. um, or assist projects that are more on the forefront. And a lot of people have been surviving. So I do think it creates quite an existential crisis. And people are made to change. They are meant to evolve. And the old paradigm, I usually don't use that word a lot, but it's very fitting. The old paradigm was you would stay within your job all your life. Mm -hmm. It actually looked bad on your resume to have multiple jobs. Now, that's the way you build your money. That's the way you build your salary. It's like yeah. it's completely flipped. And so we're really evolving the, uh, the mentality and the mold of you have to evolve, you have to evolve, you have to keep changing, you have to, you know, build yourself as a person. And a lot of people, they're not used to doing that. I, 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 and that's actually very taxing mm -hmm. on a soul. What do I do next? Um, you know, I can't stay here. Am I being valued? No, they're... They want someone to fulfill my job. They they don't want to pay me um, for my experience. Yeah. Right? Like all, all these things, all these things coming to a head that COVID is helping to facilitate on a certain level of consciousness with how we're evolving. I hope that makes sense. It did. Kelly, you and I have to take our break at the bottom of the hour. Please stand by. Always great talking to you. And Nation. if you'd like to contact Kelly for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, visit her website, kellybrickle.com. That's K-E-L-L-Y-B-R-I-C-K-E. 
L.com. We'll both be back after this two minute break. Don't go away. Kelly Brickle's our guest, www.kellybrickle.com. Kelly, as a spiritual teacher, what do you teach? Oh, I uh, specialize in teaching psychic development, uh, mediumship development, mm -hmm. um, teaching people about numerology and how they can actually uh, understand the archetypes of the numbers as a system. Uh, those are, and uh, I teach healing too, but that's, yeah, my main wheelhouse. Wow. How does numerology work? You know, I, I, I've had many numerologists on the show and I just cannot understand how a numerologist does what a numerologist does. It blows me away. <laughs> it's fun. You know, uh, I'm always wrapping my head around it too. So um, I got into it. So remember when I was uh, kind of talking back earlier, how I had a lot of alone time when I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> late at night. So when I was trying to figure out, well, how the heck does this stuff all work? And is this all mm. real? I wanted to pick a system to understand, well, what if, you know, somebody did condense a certain, um, you know, modality t in order to connect to energy? Is that even possible? So I looked at astrology and I looked at numerology and some other uh, systems. And for whatever reason, numerology started striking me because I would take people's birth dates. So people like within the public, whether it was like an actress or actor or like a politician um, or my, or the people that I knew. So I had reference points and I'd go, Oh, I kind of understand why they would get those numbers. I would, I understand why these numbers are within their birth chart. That makes sense with their personality, with their persona, the way they come across, the way they talk. Okay, maybe there's something to that. And I would see patterns. Like um, a lot of actors would have like five in their charts um, or threes. Um, um, people who were lawyers or involved um, with some type of mediation or resolution work, like counselors too, um, would have a lot of twos in their charts. Uh, people that worked in radio or communications um, or entertainment in general, a lot of threes in their charts again. And there was just these patterns, people who are very good with uh, math um, or deal with science a lot, have a lot of sevens in their charts, you know? So there's these patterns that were undeniable. 
And I just kind of kept with it as a hobby for many years, but I would do it all the time. I would just be walking down the street and just calculating addresses and phone numbers and license plates. And so I found my way through just kind of just, what is this? Let me just like rattle all these numbers constantly in my head. <laughs> and then you wonder why you can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my brain at times. <laughs> um. Number three, uh, what is the mo most prevalent number in a person? Yeah. And okay, so um, there's nine um, in the type of numerology I do. So there's different systems. I do Pythagorean okay. numerology, and that's a type of Western numerology. And so there's nine number archetypes. Um, everything breaks down to one through nine. You could have repeating numbers, like let's say, you know, the famous 11 or 22 or 33, right. Right? but they all break down to that one or nine. Like the 11 is one plus one that breaks down into a two. Right. The, the 22 is two plus two that breaks down into a four. So um, everything goes back to just this basic system, but what makes it unique is there's all these different placements of numbers. Now, there's no, I guess, for most common number, people are going to have certain clusters of the nine. Does that make sense? Yep. And depending on the predominance of those clusters and the placement of those clusters, that highlights how they act in the world, how their mind works, how their heart works, how people see them, how they've chosen their career, things like mm. that. That's really cool. And I, I would imagine that numerology is can be very useful to people in business as well as in their personal lives. Yes. That's one of the things I specialize in. Um, I can take somebody's business and see if it matches the energy of their numbers. And if it doesn't, they can actually have conflicts with how they go about things they can actually feel stressed at work they could have a brick and mortar location that does not mm -hmm. support the energy of their business whether the type of business it is or the energy within their charts um you can even chart compare with employees and see if you're of like minds um if this uh person has skills to facilitate what you're trying to do with the business um it's all these little things like that. If your website even is in harmony with your name and your birth, right. it's like that. I, I imagine it would also be advantageous to couples who are planning a long-term relationship to see if their numbers actually uh, work with each other and that the energy is proper. Absolutely. That's relationship numerology. That's something business uh, like so personal numerology, mm -hmm. uh, business and relationship are the ones that I focus on the most. And again, it's like this chart comparison and it's like, how do you work and do you really have the same trajectory? Kelly, we have to take our final break. Please stand by. XO Nation, my guest this hour is Kelly Brickle. Her website is kellybrickle.com, K-E-L-L-Y-B-R-I-C-K-E-L.com. And uh, contact uh, Kelly through her website for a personal one-on-one -on -one consultation, whether it's for her psychic abilities, her mediumship, numerology, or any other other great information that Shelly, that Kelly, who the hell is Shelly? I don't know. I have a shell on my site. It's my new logo. You're feeling it. You're feeling it. You're feeling it. Thank you. See what you do to me? Yes. It's the Nautilus energy. <laughs> Stand by. We'll be back. Don't go away, Exonation. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 
Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. SIMULTV.com, Sonny Boy. SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. SIMULTV.com. Welcome back, everyone. Kelly Brickle is our special guest. KellyBrickle.com is her website. Um, how would you suggest that people adjust themselves to the new age that is coming? Because I'm, I'm sure that the future has a number of ups and downs for us that we're just not expecting. So how can we best go with the flow, should I say? I would say, so everybody's flow is a little bit different, mm -hmm. but to be devoted to understanding yourself better. I know it sounds very, very simple, but honestly, if you are able to be in the mind frame of improving yourself, being curious about yourself, mm -hmm. um, being more positive of where you're going, despite what's going on around you, and that's like the world, society, family, friends, obstacles, whatever comes your way, you're going to emanate that throughout your life and you're going to survive. So that's what we want at base level. We want survival. And then we want thriving beyond that. And once we figure out how to navigate surviving for ourselves and go, hey, this, this, this is what I need to take on within my life. This helps me feel more like myself. This is, is, is my ticket. I'm, I'm feeling more comfortable with living and the energy that I'm bringing to people. And now that and the people mm -hmm. are bringing me different energy, you get into your thriving energy and you start to find your groove and you kind of feel like you can steer and navigate through most things better. And I think that's really like a lot of confidence that people are still developing. How am I going to deal with this? Because yeah. there's so many different variables that life gives us and we have to be very flexible and fluid and yet we have these strengths and weaknesses and, and how do we keep ourselves in the mix with all the turbulence? You have to develop some of these skills and, and then the devotion for betterment. You know, I've got a saying, Kelly, that life is simple. We complicate it. Yes, I agree with that. So the time has come, my friend, when I must ask you, what are your final thoughts and what message would you like to leave with the Exxon Nation tonight? My brain's so busy, so it's like I have a million final thoughts. <laughs> so my final thoughts, I guess, pushing one laser in and now. Um, <laughs> I will complete the assignment. Um, I just, I, I'm so, I guess, happy to share my life with people within this work because it gives me immense satisfaction, and I just want to continue to inspire for people to put their time into and energy into what gives them immense satisfaction. And sometimes you have to learn what, you know, happiness feels like for yourself, what mm -hmm. pleasure feels like for yourself, what joy feels like for yourself, because we haven't been always been taught to acknowledge those things. And those are signs of we are going in the right direction. Um, and when we're able to apply that to our life and other people are benefiting, not just ourselves within our joy and our pleasure and our passion, uh, we know that we're going to be okay in some way, you know, like, it's like, we're tethered to the earth. Okay. I want to be yeah. here. Okay. This is fun. This is awesome. So I light up when I talk about this stuff because it makes me happy and I do feel like it's my purpose. And so if you're looking for your purpose, really lean into your joy and learn more about it. That's why I want to leave, leave people with. Kelly, as always a great pleasure talking to you. And I look forward to the next time you meet us back here in the X zone. So until then be safe, enjoy life and keep doing the great job you're doing. Thank you so much, Rob. It was great seeing you tonight.
Take care. And Dexo Nation, if you'd like to contact Kelly, her website is kellybrickle.com, K-E-L-L-Y-B-R-I-C-K-E-L.com. Well, that's it for this hour, Exo Nation. I'll be back on the other side of the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as we continue right here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Like I said, don't go away. Oh, wait a minute. One more thing before you go away. 50 for free. That's five zero F O R F R E E 54 free 50 of the top TV channels, 95 video games online in five languages and thousands of movies on demand all free. All you need to do is go to www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca scroll down the main page and just follow the simple instructions. 100% free. Wow. Yes, and even the Exxon TV channel is there. And it should be. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Whatever you do, don't go away. Question. What is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer, you get Beautiful Mind Coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brainalicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee, decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and nonverbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning? For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at amazon.ca and amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today. Music